Oh, I see we got the same mic. It's a good mic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is life and consciousness beyond the veils. And some of us can see, hear, feel, and just know this and communicate safely and without fear with those beings who live beyond the unseen. But how did they get to this point where seeing orbs, shadows, and magical beings aren't straight up terrifying? In this episode, Ryan and I chat about the journey towards real mediumship, owning your craft, and living a life where you can see and feel everything and not be afraid. Ryan, why do you think some people are afraid to dive deeper into their skills? You know, I think it stems from a fear of the unknown. I think that people... You know, they're so afraid. What if I'm not good at this? What if I'm making this all up? What if something bad happens to me because I start delving into this? You know, you just have all these fears, especially I remember mine early on. You're like, am I crazy? Should I even be spending my time and money on this? Um, You get concerned what people are going to think about it. And I think a lot of those unknowns really hinder you and keep you from from getting involved in all of this, you know? Um, I think it's like anything in life where it's sort of like better than a devil you know than the one you don't. Mm -hmm. And I think that that really stops people from moving forward, Mm. you know? So what are some steps that people can take to move them out of fearing the unknown? Well, I tell people start educating yourself as much as you possibly can. Um, Absorb as much information as you can get your hands on because the more you know, the less fearful you'll be Mm -hmm. about all of this. Mm -hmm. And I also tell people early on, um, if you start treating the spirit world just like the world you're living in, It, it takes away all that fear and strangeness. You know, like I tell people, spirits are no different than the people you interact with daily. <laughs> and you do that really well. You know, like we get up, we have coffee, uh, we go to work, we go out with our friends, we may, maybe walk down a dark alley and see some creepy people we stay away from. <laughs> it's no different in the spirit world, you know? And when you start making it something that's not this big, bad thing that's gonna get you, it can really help. It really goes very far. Wow. I like that a lot. And I think that that is a sort of definition that I like to feel when I think of a spiritual person. And that person is somebody who treats those beyond the veil the same as in front of the veil. Like there is almost no differentiation between the spirit world and the waking world. And then really they start to merge like where you're like, whoa. Oh, totally. (laughs) Totally. And well, we are, as you know, we're a spirit inside of a body. That's why we can communicate with spirits because our spirit is talking to them. So that really makes it less fearful also, you know, and it's like, we're really, you know, people think if you're being intuitive and you're using your intuitive abilities that you're talking to deceased loved ones, maybe so, but throughout your whole day, you're being that intuitive person. You're picking up on energy. Um, when you're talking to your friend, you're sort of reading their energy, um, trying to see what's going on you know, underneath what they're telling you. When you start looking at your life like, geez, I'm, I'm always being this intuitive person, then you start realizing that the mundane, the regular stuff is, is very similar to doing the bigger stuff. You know, yeah, mm. that's a sound bite there. <laughs> I was like, mm. the mundane is similar to doing the bigger stuff. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's like we're always these intuitive beings picking up on energy around us, and um, it doesn't have to be just sitting down and connecting with you know ascended masters. It it can be while you're grocery shopping or something simpler than that, you know, and then people start going, geez, I've been doing this this whole time, but I thought I was just living my life. And it's like, no, you've, you've been doing it in different ways. You just didn't think they were maybe as magical as it seems to be connecting to higher evolved beings or what have you. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what would you say to someone who might be in a sort of cycle or finds themselves attracting the wrong people and mm. so the wrong spirits in their life? Yes. I would say that, well, there's probably many things you need to do, but one of the first ones is to sit down and question why you are. And I think a lot of times people are avoiding that simple thing. Like, what? why are you making the decisions you're making that are drawing these people to you? Where are you not learning a lesson? You know, a lot of times, and I use this example a lot, and hopefully my friend never watches these videos, but I have a friend who's just wonderful. <laughs> Maybe she won't know it's her, but anyway, I have a friend who's wonderful, but she always attracts the worst guy. Mm. I mean, like they're all narcissists. Mm -hmm. It's almost like she has a flag outside her house. Like, <laughs> the narcissists, come on in. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned, and I can't bring to tell her, is that she has never learned her lesson. She thinks she has bad luck. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, the universe keeps trying to show you something and you keep thinking you're just having bad luck. And it's like, what did you learn? So you don't do it again. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I would say to people is you're, you're supposed to be learning a lesson. Like the universe isn't just shitting on you. It, it, you know what I mean? Excuse me. It's, yeah. it's trying to, to sort of, you know, show you those red flags and have you go, oh my gosh, I'm better than this. I deserve more. Mm -hmm. With that, when you start having up boundaries, boundaries are huge here. When you start putting up those boundaries, doing some self-reflection and learning lessons, you'll notice you bring in the right people and the right spirits because now you don't have these low spirits feeding off the situation and the energy. Oh, you brought up something so good and I'm totally going to move our conversation. All right. <laughs> where you are going. So you mentioned spirits feeding off of a particular situation. Yeah. So in the world that we are operating in, uh, psychic, medium, mystic, witchy worlds, um, there is, you know, talk of people who might have attachments or mm -hmm. energetic leeches or somebody's an energy vampire or, you know, gin and crazy stuff that where that totally makes sense. So yeah. can you go a little bit more into these types of energies that mm -hmm. feed off of um, in terms of can they be sort of servitors of somebody who literally is cursing you or maybe you're just jealous of somebody and you unknowingly kind of put that toxic cord between you and somebody else mm -hmm. um, or is it just something that, you know, is in the air. And if you don't do your spiritual protections, then it's inevitable that, you know, this can, it's like dust or something. You know? <laughs> I call them mosquitoes. I'm like, yeah. mosquitoes. I like that. yes. Yeah. I would say that it's all of what you just said. Mm -hmm. It can literally be all of it. Um, you know, you do have to do energetic self-care. And I think that that's, you know, early on when you're new to intuitive abilities, you start learning that right away. The general public isn't though, you know, and it's something I wish everyone would be able to learn um, or can learn, will learn. So there's energetic self-care. There's being attacked from other people. Um, your fears can actually manifest these beings. Like they can come almost out of nowhere just out of your energy, out of your fear. Um, you know, a lot of times even haunted places, sometimes they're haunted with spirits uh, that you created out of your own fear that it was haunted, which is real trippy to think yeah. like you could do that, yeah. but it happens. Yeah. And then you also have, you know, smart beings that are trying to bring you down and they do not want the human race to evolve. Mm -hmm. They do not want you to be good with your intuitive abilities and connect to your light. Um, so you have all kinds. I mean, just when I think I've even scratched the surface of how many beings there are, <laughs> there's more, you yeah. know? Yeah. But I tell people, if you, if you're less afraid of them and you look at them almost like that they serve a purpose, oh, yeah. that takes a lot of power away from them because they really do 
serve a purpose, not that it's a good thing, but it's, it's usually a reflection of what's going on with you Mm -hmm. as a person, you know? Um, and a lot of times we need to grow and there's a reason that your spirit guides and angels let these beings attach. Mm. And I say let, I'm using that word a little loosely, but you know, they, we can only allow in our energy what we allow. Mm. We're always in charge. So on a, a subconscious level, you have allowed this attachment or this attack to happen. And that's a whole deep thing, but it's true. We're in charge of our energy at all times. I love that. I think most of my listeners and people are ready to accept that it is what we allow. Um, So yeah, I love that you mentioned that. And I'm big on, we have to take responsibility for how we react and what we have in our field, even if it sucks, even if it's a narcissistic person, whatever. So I I love that so much. I agree. Mm Mm-hmm. I definitely, with the recent sort of Scorpio and full moon, and I actually went on this spiritual trip and I myself have come across someone who is very that uh, energetic leech kind of behavior was like in my life, like I knew that that was like what was going on. And I sat and was like, but why is this happening? And I think that was the most beautiful moment of it all was when I can be like, ah, this is what I'm learning from this. Yes. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. It's funny because you do start becoming aware of like, okay, what is this trying to show me? Um, Are my guides trying to up level me? Because a lot of times you'll receive tests Mm -hmm. about the time it's time to up level. And it's funny that you, it's nice, like you said, to be able to get to a place where you're like, wait a second, why are you here? Why are you doing this? (laughs) Who sent you? (laughs) Who sent you? But it's very powerful. It's very, it, it's very empowering to know, okay, this is my energy. I'm aware of what's going on. I mean, awareness is so big. Mm-hmm. Having self-awareness of yourself, your energy, the people around you, it, it can just open your world mm-hmm. in so many ways. Mm-hmm. Now, where does someone draw the line between being actually paranoid Mm-hmm. And also being egotistical, everything is about me and what you're here to teach me yeah. and just actually just being aware of spiritual truths that we're talking about. So mm-hmm. how can somebody be balanced in this world that it is true that people do come into our lives to teach us yeah. a lesson, but yeah. us not being like, well, what are you here to show me? And give- yeah. <laughs> Tell me your purpose, damn it. Exactly. <laughs> You know, I think that any time someone starts getting holier than now, preachy, um, not actually living their life, but always telling telling people their business or <laughs> saying, I know this and I know that. It's like, that's your ego. And I, you know, I'm sure you see this too. I see it a lot with some spiritual teachers. Mm. You can see the ones where their, their energy soft and what they're saying really resonates. And you have these other ones where they're like, I know everything and everything's a big, deep conversation. And the truth is it's not. There's times for those conversations and there's times that I want to watch Housewives <laughs> of you know, New York and eat popcorn and drink my wine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, we're not here to, for everything to be so serious all the time and to question every little thing. And I can tell you firsthand, my guides know that I am very nosy and analytical. And if I'm asking too many questions, they'll go chill out, just mm-hmm. go sit down on the couch, you know? So I think those are some of the differences. Like be careful of the know-it-all. Yeah. Be careful of the person that doesn't know how to have fun anymore. Mm. That's the person whose ego's running the show. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That hit deep. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I know a few <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I understand that. <laughs> that is so good. And when you were first talking about, okay, how do you get out of the fear of the unknown into being able to live, you know, a more quote unquote spiritual life? 
you mentioned learn, like go out and learn. And I think another key add on to that is learn with discernment because there's a lot of spiritual gurus on YouTube who have a big following, um, who have number one book bestsellers and they're really maybe not people that you should be learning from. Of course, yes. you'll learn from that lesson when you realize, ah, I'm not so sure about that person, but there's yes. also just make sure that just because it says like spiritual ways to live your life, it doesn't really mean that you should be following every word in that book. Absolutely. You should never be looking, even though it's good to absorb information, to educate yourself is so important. A guru or any other person um, that you're looking up to should not be the end all be all. And that's a red flag too. If you're like, oh, this person is my guru and I, I listen to everywhere they say, it's like red flag right there. They shouldn't want to be that person for you and you shouldn't want them to be that person. You should be absorbing a lot of information that you resonate with, but also that gets you questioning things because you also don't want to be absorbing information you just agree with. Mm -hmm. And that's what goes on right now with our politics. So it's the same in the spirit world. Like you can't just read what you agree with. You have to read things that, that push you, mm -hmm. that you question, you know, and make you, make you do some self-reflection on yourself, you know. Yeah. What are some things that you feel can sort of trigger, if it is possible to trigger psychic experiences or psychic abilities, quote, quote? I think, well, some of the, some of the more regular ones are like, anytime you're doing anything that brings you very much into your body, like meditation, um, uh, yoga, um, acupuncture, there's all these things that make you very present in your body. And I feel that a lot of times it's those things that can kick off the spiritual awakening. You start to have things happening to you physically. You start seeing things. And really it's just because you became present. So you don't actually have to do those things, but anything that makes you present makes you actually start paying attention to what's going on. You're not ahead of yourself. You're not behind yourself. So you can see that uh, psychic event happen basically because you're in the moment you yeah know? yeah I had like so many random like conspiracy theories come in my mind when you were saying that I was like are phones made by those energies that she's saying like <laughs> doesn't want us to advance like <laughs> oh my god so wow um I totally agree with you meditation is just everything. Like I remember in the beginning of when I would do more sort of readings and talks and like spiritual mentoring, mm -hmm. I would always just be like, meditate. Like it's so simple. Yeah. Like everybody's like, well, what should I do? Or how can I find out this? And it's just like one word. And that is meditation. Yes. It is. <laughs> I say it all the time and I'm sure people get sick of it, but it's like, it's the thing that will make the biggest change because it affects you on so many levels, on so many levels, you know, like it'll cause uh, your well being to get to improve. It, it changes, you know, your brain patterns. It lets your body release blockages. I mean, just, it's like you kill many birds with one stone. It really works for everything. And I, it, for me personally, that was the thing that kicked it off. I was not meditating to try to improve my spiritual abilities, I didn't know I had any. I was meditating because I had anxiety. Mm. Well, here in front of you sits a medium now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So who to thunk? <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. And that, I think people do know the power of meditation only because I remember growing up in the South, like, only 20 years ago. And it was like when yoga studios were like popping up yeah. and like meditation was like, you know, different, I guess, centers. It was just starting to like come up as into the mainstream and churches and like other people were like, this is evil. It's going to invite like portals into your life. And then <laughs> you're going like, you know, like yep. there's such power in it. And I guess as a child, like I had no idea, like 
what's the big deal? Like, why is meditating so scary? So, because it can totally change your life. So, in the yes. best of ways. <laughs> yes. Usually in the best of ways. <laughs> Usually. Keyword. <laughs> We won't talk about the other. No, no. (laughs) But speaking of that, is there such a thing as not being ready for the psychic experiences that you do have? I, I believe so. I, I do think that generally things will unfold as they should. Having said that, if you push the energy faster than it wants to go faster than you're ready for, um, you can have a host of problems Mm -hmm. that you have to sort of then start backpedaling with. Mm -hmm. And I can speak for that for myself. I've done it. You know, you get excited. You're like, ready, set, go. Let's go right now. I want to, you know, up level here. I'm ready to take on the world and spirits like, ha, no, (laughs) you have a lot of work to do. And we're going to make you do it one way or the other, you know? And also uh, the energy is very powerful once you get it moving and it needs to be respected and your body has to be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have to go slowly with things. I always tell people like pump the brakes so we don't end up in asylum. Pump the brakes, you know? Oh my God. (laughs) Oh, this is the perfect segue to my favorite part of the show, which is pagan perspectives. All right. (laughs) Some may think that being spiritual means you have no opinion nor perspective, but this segment is here to prove that witches and energy workers aren't always above the drama and Mm -hmm. aren't indifferent or nonchalant about current events. In this segment of Pagan Perspectives, we talk about the hot and juicy topics that affect all of us, witches included. In this episode, Ryan and I have been talking about psychic stuff, being mediums, ascension symptoms, and all of the stuff that comes with it. But we haven't really talked about how our societies handle them or should be handling them. Ryan just mentioned asylums. So we know that there is one way that (laughs) psychic people are being treated. Yes. With a lot of people in the Western world thinking that they're just going crazy instead of knowing that they're just in the dark night of the soul or living their Saturn return or just ascending or just coming into their own natural witchiness. Should our governments, through our school systems, teach children how to prepare for this sort of maybe inevitable spiritual turn of age? Ryan, what do you think? I mean, in a perfect world, I'd say yes, absolutely. (laughs) It would save a lot of heartache and problems and not everyone would be on tons of medicine. But I would say realistically, if people could start implementing simpler practices at first, meditation for kids, um, teaching them to follow their breath, being present, um, practicing self-care. I think if the schools and parents could start with that, the simpler things, yoga, if they could put yoga in school where you have that for 20 minutes a day, this would be a way to warm people up to what is eventually going to unfold. I mean, because we're moving in that direction it's going to take a while. We are moving in this direction where this will be more accepted. Um, I think that would be a good place to start, though, with, with stuff that just is a little easier for people to swallow, like yeah. the yoga, the meditation. And then we can later spring on them the <laughs> psychic abilities and all that good stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it'll just be inevitable. Like you were saying, you just started meditating and then bang, bang, you're... Yep. sitting here today. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I definitely, sometimes I feel sad mm-hmm. and just uh, almost like thinking, well, why isn't this taught? And then my conspiratorial mind starts rolling. But I feel that um, there's a lot of people 
on the streets who've come into homelessness or who've come into addiction mm -hmm. only because mm -hmm. they just didn't know how to turn off the noises of spirits and nobody else knew what to tell them and said either you're crazy or you know when you do heroin then you don't hear anything and then they're like oh that's true so i just feel that it's this ignorance that mm -hmm. has pretty much ruined mm -hmm. you know a lot of people's lives and that is you know you can go out on the street and talk to probably four out of ten of them are gifted psychics yes. seeing everything and it's just they just don't know how to you know cope and I feel that in the western world that's not really accepted even though we're yes. on a podcast talking about okay this is what we do it's you know not everybody would think that we're fully functioning people in the world <laughs> <laughs> I pay my taxes I swear <laughs> I vacuumed earlier today. <laughs> On the astral plane or here? Well, <laughs> the astral plane needs a lot of vacuuming. <laughs> you, you're totally right, though. It, and it, it's interesting because, you know, when you're trying to difference between are you losing it? or are these abilities, a lot of times the symptoms are similar and it is because you're sensitive. Um, I've told people the beauty is the treatment is the same. So, cause people will come to me, am I losing it or do I have psychic abilities? And I'm like, well, here's the great thing. They both require you doing some self care. They both require going to a therapist, maybe a holistic therapist, so you can talk. They require some knowledge and education on your part, um, looking at your diet, what you're eating. Like we could go on and on about it, but basically the treatments are the same. And then, then we can start to unravel what's really going on is that your spirit needs something. It's calling out, it needs something from you, you know? And I think if people could be more open minded to what's really going on with someone instead of shutting them down with drugs or just not validating them, we'd all be healthier as a society. Psychic abilities are not, you know. It's sad to me that I think well, years ago I went to a therapist because I myself thought I was losing it. When you start hearing voices and seeing stuff right away, you're like, uh-oh, I'm going to have to check myself in someplace. <laughs> You know, and um, I went to a therapist and I was lucky enough, I found one that was very open minded. When I told her what I was seeing, she thought I had intuitive abilities, but it still was going to be requiring me to bring down my anxiety and start doing some self care to make myself feel better. I started doing that. My intuitive abilities opened along with me feeling better. And I remember thanking her. I said, oh my God, thank you so much. And she said, or I said, what would happen if I had gone to another therapist? And she said, you'd probably be on a heavy cocktail of medicine. And that broke my heart to think how many people yeah. that's happened to. So you're right. It's sad. It's, it's very sad that we, we do that to people when we don't understand. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel that, I mean, the people who call themselves intuitive and on our side, we're not contributing to that certain economy. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, it just makes sense that, you know, meditating and finding the answers for yourself and actually being truly healthy, um, yeah. isn't something that, some doctors want. So, no, no. <laughs> there's that. <sighs> but speaking of good health and just learning how to take care of yourself, would you be able to tell us more about those who are wondering about their own ascension and their own psychic abilities and balancing their own lives can come to you to find out more? Absolutely. I love helping people sort of unravel what's happening to them. A lot of times people come to me and they're scared with what the symptoms they're experiencing are. And I can not only make you feel better by looking into what's going on and breaking it down for you, 
but then we can walk you through some basics so that at the end of the session, you can walk away and go, oh my gosh, I, I'm not losing my mind. I actually am intuitive and now I'm more educated. You know, I'll, I'll go over things with you. So you're like, oh, I, I thought it was this and it's this that makes so much more sense. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to do that for people. I feel personally, I really suffered with ascension symptoms and I don't want other people to have to suffer the same way. So don't suffer long on your own, whether you get a hold of me or, or anyone else, just get some assistance so you can feel better and you can learn that you can even slow down your ascension symptoms if they're uncomfortable. You have the power to do that. And that's where, again, the education and knowledge comes in. Knowledge is power, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I also feel that even if you find that your own ascension symptoms are beyond what's written in a book, mm -hmm. it's still good to go to a reader. And I say this because now the people that I'm reading are, I feel like up leveling myself or maybe just like showing me that I'm up leveling or we're up leveling together because there's a lot of, evolving within the spiritual yes. world too. So, I mean, if you go to Amazon, you'll see a bunch of books on, unfortunately, things that we all know, like, okay, all the clear senses, like pretty much everybody, or we're getting to that point where everybody is psychic and everybody's a medium. But then I feel that people who are younger, um, and I'm a millennial, so I feel like Gen Z's are like bringing a lot of stuff to the game where I'm like, whoa, like you're a straight up God or goddess with like some crazy powers that I have never even read about in a book unless it was like some mythology. So I still feel like even if you've done the research and this is not just to like promote our reading, sure. but <laughs> even if you've done the research and there's nobody else you know, in your waking world that has the abilities that you have, it doesn't mean that you still should feel like I can't talk to anybody or the yes. CIA is watching my phone. If I do <laughs> someone like it's still, you know, there's still help and hope for you. If something's yes. going on with you, that is not Instagrammable. Absolutely. And I think early on, we try to do so much of this on our own. You know, we don't want to spend the money. Um, we're embarrassed. Uh, we're afraid to feel stupid, all those things. So we, so we just Google and Google and buy books, which some of that's okay. But then eventually it's like, you know, just bite the bullet and get a hold of someone you resonate with mm -hmm. because they can get a lot of times to the root of this a lot quicker. Yeah. You know, even for people when I meet them and they're having, let's say, uncomfortable symptoms, I can look in and see what you're doing wrong, you know, or maybe certain people, they're talking to deceased loved ones. Maybe their energy is more suited for angels. So that's where they're being drained and their energy is suffering. And I'm able to look in and go, hey, listen, we want you doing this maybe instead of this. And they're like, oh my gosh, okay. And yeah, you cannot get that from a book because it's unique to the person. It's unique to your energy, and that's what you and I do. We read the person's energy, yeah. you know. Yeah, mm, that was so good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> like, yes. <laughs> so, can you tell people where they can go exactly to find out more about you and contact you? Yes, my website is rockthedivine.com. My YouTube is Rock the Divine. My Instagram is rock under slash the under slash divine. And I what I do is my website, you can check it out. Right now I'm not taking on clients quite yet, not probably for another week or two, but I send out emails. If you're subscribed to my website, I send out emails alerting you to when I'm going to be taking on more mentoring students. In the meantime, I do offer Vimeo rentals that I found have really helping people so they can practice before or after they meet with me. And those have been really successful. So you can check those out. And, you know, a lot of times people keep waiting and it's like, don't wait. Do something, anything to start moving you in that right direction to hone your abilities. Yes. Oh, 
Thank you so much for being on the show, spreading oh. your light and doing your work that helps people to spread their own light in the world. So guys, thank you so much for listening. Make sure you check out Ryan's website, Instagram, YouTube. And when you're done, rate and review Magic and Mediums. Bye guys. Bye. Thank you.